Chapter 4 The Assassination Attempt Her appearances on the television, her awards and nominations and her public advocacy of female education made her a recognisable face in the Swat Valley. She began to receive death threats on her Facebook profile. Fake Facebook profiles were created to malign her. Death threats were even published in newspapers. But nothing scared her and she continued her activism publicly despite the threats. On the morning of October 9, 2012, Malala was travelling back home from school discussing school and homework with her friends just like any normal kid would do. The bus was stopped by two members of the Taliban. The militants called her name and threatened the kids that if they did not tell them who was Malala, they would shoot everyone. When she responded, three shots were fired at her, Along with her, two of her friends were also injured in the shooting. She was seriously wounded with one bullet lodged in her shoulder and another entering and exiting her head. She was airlifted to a Pakistani military hospital in Peshawar. After receiving many offers from around the world for her treatment, Malala was shifted to the Queen Elizabeth Hospital in Birmingham, England. Four days later, she was taken to this hospital where she was admitted to the intensive care unit. All costs for treatment were borne by the Pakistani government. She came out of a coma two days later on the 17th of October 2012. The doctors believed that she had a full chance of recovery and there was no danger of brain damage. On the 3rd of January 2013, she was discharged from hospital. She continued to get better, but her hearing was affected and her skull required reconstruction. A month later, she went through a five-hour operation where her hearing was restored by a cochlear implant and her skull was reconstructed.